gun looks good. And the funny thing is, I didn't even try to make it look cool. It just ended up this way. If I was to take it to the nines, so to speak, I would do the following. Chop the barrel right about there, re-thread it, SBR paperwork. Put on a cooler looking optic. We're talking about second kind of cool here, right? Not capabilities. Maybe an EOTech, an A point. Then I'd give it a monochromatic finish, kind of like this, FDE, either in Cerakote or Duracote, or even one of those very trick condensed multicam camo finishes. <laughs> kind of like you saw on the SGL 21. Actually, it's a 31 we did here in TMP. Man, then it would be, seriously, an extremely impressive Mini 14. Now, I'm not going to do any of that stuff because, as you will see, it's all about capabilities, not looks. But, first things first, this sucker looks cool. In fact, even as it is right now without those other modifications, it is probably one of the coolest looking Mini 14s I've ever seen. In fact, it is the coolest Mini 14 I've ever put together. Now, you longtime subscribers to TMP know that I've done more than a few Mini 14 modifications in my time. Since 1984, I reckon I have modified, put together, coded, what have you, 10 Mini 14s for both friends and myself over the years. This is the coolest, hands down. It's very purposeful looking, mean looking, special ops looking, which by the way, we're going to talk about heavily in this video. Ready for war, right? About the other, the only other Mini 14 I think that would compete, at least in terms of coolness and looks with this one, in my opinion, and that's all it is, would be several versions of the AC556 that I've held over the years. Haven't shot them, but held them. That is the full auto version of the Mini 14 once upon a time. SBR all, all of them are short barreled rifles, LE guns, very, very cool but I still think as configured with a Troy MCS Gym Tech suppressor, even with a Redfield scope on it, this is the coolest. Very, very cool. You are, of course, watching the Nut Fancy Project well into year five. Soon it will be year six. The original also video gear adventure channel started it all. The adventure continues. The questions continue about systems, and that's what this video is about. As cool as this gun looks, the question is, can it get by on looks alone? Because I'm going to you know, ask some very hard questions of the system as configured in this video. Can this configuration with a Troy MCS with a Mini 14 tactical version residing with inside the Gym Tech, can it fulfill a special operations role? Stand by. No joke. Now, you may ask, what do you mean by special operations rifle? Well, I think you know already. In other words, if you are a Navy SEAL, a special operator in, let's say, Afghanistan, and you have a rack of weapons to choose from as you begin your deployment, this is one of them, would you choose it? Is it reliable enough? Is it tough enough? Is it lightweight enough? We're gonna talk about that. Hmm, no surprise there. We've been talking about that in TMP forever. Is it ergonomic enough? Is it mission adaptable? I love that term, by the way. The versatility of a weapon system is it accurate enough portable enough as you hike you know 40 miles is it quiet enough a low noise signature the mini 14 we're going to call it the special operations mini 14. those are hard questions and before we get going here this by the way will be feature length grab the popcorn i think if you like the mini 14 the m4 m16 ar15 series you're going to love this video feature length. But before we get into the meat of the question and the comparison and the testing for this video, a couple ground rules. First off, you're going to see me compare this against an AR-15 variant, no surprise. I could have compared it against a bunch of other guns. In fact, why don't we introduce him now? Special Operations Mini 14. And it's going to go up against the Nut & Fancy SPR number one, previously reviewed, highly beloved Speaking of monochromatic finish, speaking of ultra cool looks, there you go. I have to take out this 30 round mag and put in a 20 so it will fit on the table. 
For the comparison, I could have used a bunch of different rifles, but these are in inventory currently, always subject to change. I think it's a fair comparison, especially when we get to weight. Now, this is Mini 14 Tactical, this, the gun itself. That is Ruger number, model number 5847. There's other variations of that gun, kind of like the Mini 14 Target, and perhaps you would say that would be a more fair comparison going up against an 18-inch barreled SPR. I call it an SPR. It's just basically an 18-inch barreled 1 and 7, 1 and 8 twist AR-15, precision AR-15. I would say absolutely not, because if I go with the target model, here's a picture of it, that is model number 5828, it's going to add a lot of weight. Now granted, that's a longer barrel on the Mini-14 target, I think it's like a 22-inch barrel, it's got the harmonic dampener on it, it's going to be very difficult to suppress, we're going to lose that dampening capability on it, it's going to add 2 pounds, out of the question. I could have gone with an M4, right? Something more analogous. But I'm looking at more in terms of weight, and I'm really going to kind of talk again about the SPR concept and how, why it makes a lot of sense. So there you go. It's just the two rifles. We could spend all day saying this rifle, that one. I think you're going to see there's a lot of data as we bounce these two configurations back and forth amongst each other that you will come away with perhaps some answers to questions you're asking if you're a fan of either system. Next, ground rule, I guess. This is all business, this comparison. We're not going to talk about a recreational POU. I'm really not going to talk that much about value. Because remember the scenario, it's a special operations gun that you're taking. And as a special operations troop, we're pretending here, you know, it's not coming out of your pocket. Would you take a Mini 14 as configured or an SPR as configured? Those are your only two choices in the video. Okay, so it's just, you know, all business. We're not going to goof around with other stuff I talk about, recreational philosophy views. This is a defend your life weapon, and can it do it day after day, month after month? Are you going to bet your life on it? Now, I'm not a special operations guy. <laughs> I am retired military. Go Air Force. Thank you very much. No, I'm not, but I have played Call of Duty one time, and that totally qualifies me for this video. <laughs> I'm kidding. No, I just... I think I have played it once, but I don't even remember what it's about. No, what I base this on is, you know, years of experience with both, ty both types. I have a lot of data from shooting these. It's me applying logic. That was a hit. Perhaps a little bit of my knowledge of the military on this question. That's all it is. So I don't purport to be an expert. Like, this is a, you know, the final say in the issue. It's just a data point, a very interesting one, as you'll see. I would have liked to do a lot more shooting with this gun, but I spent a lot of ammo and time sighting it in, getting the accuracy results for you, because that's going to be a big part of the equation. Remember, in special operations question, we said, hey, is it accurate enough? So I well exceeded the ammo budget here in TMP. This is a probably a good point, a uh, good place to say this. As, as it is, for what it is, I love the Mini-14. That's not debatable at all. I mean, if you go back to 2008, 2009, 2010 here in the Net Fancy Project, you will see a lot of airtime devoted, love given to the Mini 14 system, especially the tactical. I did the run and gun series, Mini 14 Against the World, the Mini 14 Tactical, you know, the home defense series back in 2008. I love the Mini 14 for what it is, but we're going to really focus in on that very tough question. Is it special operations capable? You counting? Miss, miss. To me, it's a fascinating question, uh, okay. which will take us right into philosophy of use. And we've touched on it already. Three. And that is, is it Spec Hit. Ops GTW, go to war capable? Hit all five. Now we're going to go down, you know, the categories, the stuff I mentioned, you, you know, the accuracy, yeah. the ergonomics, all that stuff. But for me, what that means is, do I have a 600 yard weapon in a 5.56? Now, I've done a lot of reviews on 308 battle rifle, rifles, and those I called sappers. I know I got all my, my own designations. These, by the way, were in, in existence long before I did TMP between my friends and I. We always did it just so we know what we're talking about. But a semi-automatic precision rifle is a 308 rifle. I much prefer it, but oftentimes it's going to be excluded in this very hard question because of SAWC. Crap, another acronym. Newman. Size and weight constraints. We can't take a 308 battle rifle 
A good example of that would be Operation Anaconda, Marcus Luttrell. So when we address this philosophy of use question, spec ops capabilities, that's exactly the type of scenario you need to look at. Body armor, water, blah, blah, blah. All the stuff I've talked about, can you take your 308 76251 gun? The answer is no. I can take an SPR with 77, 75 grainers in it and reach out to 600 yards. That is a weapon system with current technology that makes a lot of sense. Is a Mini-14 capable of that? It's a sweet setup. 600 yards. Well, I'm not going to answer it yet. Stay tuned. Keep watching. Keep eating the popcorn. You'll see it. Secondarily, it could be a spotter's rifle and a sniper team. Great choice. 77, 75s. Popping out of a Mark 12 SPR. Absolutely. Well proven. Go watch my concept SPR video. A lot of philosophy in that one. Speaking of which, I'm not going to go in depth and review each of these guns individually. No, we're going to focus with laser beam precision on the question. Is a Mini-14 as configured like this, you see on the table, ready for a special operations mission? Spec Ops GTW. How about WROL rifle? We're talking philosophies of use. I'll leave that to you. You know, and I might bounce back to that philosophy of use question and tell you what my preference would be between these two as configured. By the end of the video, I think it'll be clear. Another philosophy of use. I kind of opened the video with this. Second kind of cool. Now, that's a hard, hard question between these two guns. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, you're new to TMP. Welcome, by the way. Glad to have you. I'm basically talking about something that turns you on. You just love it. You just say, you know, this is freaking cool. It gives me pleasure just to own it, even as configured. I mean, like, I, again, if I did those other modifications, it'd just be, oh, jeez, insanely sick. I'm talking the mini here. Or an SPR, especially like this one. You know, which one gives you the most pleasure to own and just fondle and hang out with, show your friends, gain cool points from your friends? I don't know. Everybody's different. In some ways, I think the Mini wins because it's so unusual. Have you ever seen a Troy... By the way, this is a Troy MCS on here. I'll go feature by feature here in a second. Have you ever seen one in FDE? You know, I talked about doing a monochromatic finish on it, but in some ways, I like the black. The black contrasting with this. We're just talking about looks, coolness, all that. Second kind of cool, I almost think this wins. Because it's more special. It's just freaking insane looking. With a Gemtech Trek suppressor. Damn. <laughs> How about a three gun rifle, competition rifle? And, you know, I'm running suppressors on here because of the question we're asking. Special operations. I mean, if we're popping, we're suppressed, dudes. You don't want to be discovered, so you're running a can on it. But if you're competing with it, which gun would you prefer to have? Uh, nothing fancy. Well, knowing what I know, I'd take the SPR hands, S SPR hands down. I would. That being said, I mean, and you've seen it on camera, the Mini-14 will hold its own in the hands of a competent user in any tactical carving course. Been there, done it. Showed you on camera. You know, it, it will run well. That's all I'm going to say on philosophy of use because the whole video really is about that as we again focus on the question. How about innovation, design, ergonomics? This is where I'm going to go point by point really quickly on how the guns are configured as they go up against each other to answer the question. Again, that's a Gym Tech Trek stainless steel iconol and it is 17 ounces, 5.7 inches in length. It's a half by 28 standard threading, thread on version, one and a half inch diameter. It's a great can. Good can. Okay, and then this, of course, is the very expensive, it is, as you see, fully configured, that is with a Troy Battle Sights, front and rear, FDE coloration, you know, milled 6000 series, I believe, aluminum, Troy MCS Mini 14 chassis system. Very, very cool looking. Outfitted with rails all around. You know, Makes it look like, like something out of Starship Troopers or Aliens, if you ask me. Very cool. Okay, so that was accomplished. Single point sling attachments, left and right. Standard stock left in the back. Multi-position stock, no surprise there. And then I put a Troy MO, 
uh, not Troy, but Magpul MOE grip on it. And I will say uh, I had to modify this, grind it with the Dremel because you can see there's a freaking huge gap right there with nothing to butt up against. The MCS will take AR-15 grips. It does give you mostly AR-15 ergonomics in a lot of ways, stock grips. That's cool. And then the gun as modified, I highly, highly recommend this by the way, the Yoda trigger job. You know, speaking of impressive, this thing pulls at, I wrote it down, I wrote it down, three pounds, like 12 ounces, as performed by Terry Gardner of Impact Guns. Highly recommend it. If you have a Mini 14, I mean, that's like standard. You mod it like this, don't mod it like this, get a Mini 14 trigger job. It'll increase your rate of fire and your accuracy huge. Okay, then magazines we're going to talk about here in Firepower a little bit. Redfield 3x9 scope with a ballistic reticle. That is a Weaver SPR mount. Cost effective. Now, we could say, and this is an interesting value discussion, you could say, well, you know, you should put that optic on it. Well, you know, I, I didn't say I was really going to focus on cost that much, but I, for me, TMP, I have to kind of. I mean, I'd really like to put a Leopold, a, you know, scope on there, illuminated. Ideally, that would be. But the Mini 14 is a cost-effective weapon. You can make the case. It gives frees up dollars for you to get a can, get better glass, as opposed to buying the gun, then you don't have any money, money left. Okay, so I understand that. And you could say I upgrade it to a, you know, LaRue mount. Good enough, though. It's good enough, capable enough for war. I don't know. We'll see. This gun, really quickly. This is nothing fancy. I'd say nothing fancy. The first SPR. That is a, and I say first because I built another one after this. This is a you know, ground up build from me. That is a Battle Comp 2.0. That is an AR Stoner 18 inch barrel fluted, sanded the flutes. It's a one and eight twist wild chamber, Troy battle sights, Troy rail on it. The scope on this one is a Monarch Buckmasters. I think it is a four and a half. Yeah, cause this is a long range POU on this gun. Four and a half to 14. Very capable, not the best scope, medium grade glass. That is a Night Force Unimount, very expensive. Speaking of cost, 30 mil rings in there since it's a one inch tube. Gas Buster charging handle, going fast. Chip McCormick trigger, pulling at about two pounds, 12 ounces, so even lighter than the Mini 14. Bad lever from Magpul, Myad CTR. And then I have a sling here, and then a couple attachments up front down and dirty that's what this SPR is innovation design ergonomics which is the best ergonomically let's go back to the question you're hiking through the hills you're going to be carrying this gun forever along with your full combat loadout whether you're a troop whether you're a responsible civilian in whatever situation which gun do you want to carry around well at the heart of ergonomics is weight you knew this was coming right like the patch says, lighten everything. Thank you, sir. Okay, first up, the, the SPR, number one, at the top. Full up is 8 pounds, 11 ounces, unloaded with an 18-inch barrel. Wow, that's pretty good. Oh, by the way, you might be saying, hey, nothing fancy. You got the can on the Mini 14, but what about the SPR? Oh, you mean like this? There's SPR number two. This played in the game too. Yeah, like that. Okay, cool. I'm with it. Yeah, both were ran with cans without. This is also a Gem Tech Trek. Yeah, so there's apples to apples comparison. By the way, that's pretty damn light for an SPR. 18 inch barrel, fully configured with glass, a magazine, everything. All right, no sling. I get that. No light or bipod, but still 8 pounds, 11 ounces. Yeah, that's my goal. And that's a mid-weight profile. I'm not going pencil barrel on that sucker. Compare that as configured without the can, that is a suppressor. The Mini 14 is 10 pounds, 4 ounces. What? That's right. This Troy MCS, and I reviewed the M14 M1A MCS already, and I gave it the same criticism, of course. It's heavy. It adds a lot of weight to the Mini 14. That is solid metal here. And then as you can see those, uh, I guess, kind of cool rails. 
add a lot of weight because they're non-removable. They're just CNC milled in. You may ask at this point, well, why go with the Troy MCS? Because here's the answer. Because even though it's the heaviest, I think it is the most serious stock out there for the Mini 14. There's your answer. Granted, it can't doesn't have removable sections, but it gives me all kinds of capabilities to add a bipod, to add a light, and in a military environment or whatever environment, add night vision on top. I got full pick rail, M1913 rail on top. There's your answer. The Tapco stock, as cool as it is, and I've modified one of those, shown it, ran, you know, ran with it, and lots of drills here in TMP. Cool, cool stock, but I do not think it me measures up or is tough enough for a hard military environment. So that was eliminated. The ATI stock that is featured on another version of the Ruger Mini 14 Tactical. By the way, that is the model 5846 with the ATI stock. I hate that. I hate that stock. There's no. <laughs> No way. If that's on the rack as I'm deploying, I'm all, I freaking will laugh at that thing. The Mini 14 with a Troy is a very, very tough system. There are some caveats. That's your answer there. But weight balance and feel, SPR, 18-inch barrel too versus a 16-inch barrel, both mid-profile. Now you see what I'm saying. I mean, if I'd gone with a, you know, a heavier Mini 14 version, the weight thing is just outlandish. With a suppressor, this sucker on the table weighs 11 pounds, 5 ounces. That's with a 30-round steel Ruger factory magazine, which this one is. Ergonomically, triggers are both excellent. I could live with either one. Both pistol grips are, you know, AR-15 style. Same with the butt stocks. Excellent. The front ends, however, are completely different. This is my preferred the clean, narrow Troy Alpha Rail, and there's many others like it. YHM has one out. I've talked about this before. I can add or remove sections that I need, I need to. Slim, trim, outstanding. This is not a full auto weapon. I don't need a bunch of distance from the barrel. A couple rounds, you know, pop will cool down. This, however, is very oblong. It's large. We have non-removable rail sections. They are abrading on hand and, as I found, barricade. They'll shred wood like a freaking treat cheese grater. Ergonomics, I don't know, man. Uh, stock, I mean, forehand wise, that wins hand da hands down. Now, if we talk about innovation design, I'm not going to go into a lot of technical details because I've spent so much airtime on them already. This is a direct gas impingement design. I love it. I said that in my DI versus piston dilemma video about four years ago. I've always said DI, if it's treated right and maintained, is a great system. I like piston AR-15s. I review some like LWRC. Those are great, especially for SBR and can rolls. This is a piston gun, the Mini 14. So innovation design, we got DI versus piston going there. Surprisingly, both shot pretty damn dirty. <laughs> Here's the magazine coming out of the SPR. You see all the blowback, carbon fouling and stuff. It's substantial. But don't think the Mini 14 is that much better, which to me was kind of surprising. It was filthy. And both kind of blew back into your face. Make sure you got freaking safety goggles on, I found out. Shooting both of these. I don't have like eons of suppressor shooting, so I'm always learning. But yeah, wear glasses. Ergonomically, though, very similar back here. Very dissimilar up front. Pick rails are good. The weight is completely different. How about battery of arms? What are you most comfortable with? That's the question. This is basically the Mini 14 AK battery of arms. The magazines rock in. Okay, they don't insert straight. AR-15, M4, M16 do. I prefer this system. Sorry, I do. Don't get excited. It doesn't mean I don't... I hate this system. I've been running this forever. I love it. I love that system. But if you're going to say one of the two, I'll, I'll choose that system in that role. It just eliminates one you know, complication for me. I hadn't shot Mini 14s. I'll tell you this, I haven't shot Mini 14s for a long time. And in testing this gun, I screwed it up a couple times. I thought the magazine was in, it wasn't. It created a misfeed for me. Operator error, absolutely. But I've seen it lots with people running Mini 14s. You think you have it clipped in, you don't. Maybe you're distracted, maybe you're under stress. If, you know, for someone that isn't practiced at that, could happen. The magazine, Ergonomically, I will give the nod to that one.
of course. So that's ergonomics, down and dirty. How about firepower? Gotta press on. I'm gonna say they're both equal, and that means they're both excellent with what I've always called standard compa capacity magazines. The both guns are both designed for 30 round mags. This one has a 20 in it, but where'd that factory one go? You know what I'm saying? They're oh, it's under here. They're the same. Excellent firepower for both. You can get really high capacity magazines. To me, that's like 100 rounds or more for both guns if you want. Here's a freaking beta for the SPR. You could do that. I don't have much need for this, to be dead honest with you guys. I just don't. I mean, 30s are fine for me. They're quick to reload. They're much more compact to integrate into your LBE and to carry along. Uh, if you don't believe me, you know, watch and see how many special operations guys from whatever service you want running around with beta mags. You won't see a lot. You know, this is basically designed for an LMG role, which the M16, you know, the M4 is not really suited for. If you don't have a quick change barrel, uh, it's kind of foolish to be dumping that many rounds. I mean, I can dump two, and I've told you guys this on video, I can dump two 30s, three 30s, you know, through an AR-15 or a Mini-14, and you will see that barrel freaking smoking. Watch out. That's semi-auto fire. Not full. Semi-auto. Try it sometime. You'll be amazed at how hot that is. Uh, you could really ruin the barrel if you're not careful. If you just keep doing it, keep doing it, keep doing it, it's never getting a chance to cool. Some people are surprised, but that's just my own data point over the years in shooting. And that being said, I do like the capability of the AR-15 M4 system to swap out the, the upper. Speaking of mission adapt adaptability, you know, maybe you don't need an 18-inch barrel. You're doing house clear, clearing, mount, something like that. Throw on a 14-inch. Can you do it with a Mini-14? No, you're stuck with a 16-inch barrel in this configuration. You're stuck with it. Firepower is a draw between the two, though. Except for this. I do want to make this point. For the AR-15, there is a lot more magazine technology. Witness the Magpul. Which one? I mean, these are outstanding magazines. There's really not a magazine directly analogous to this for the Mini-14 yet. That being said, the Tapcos are out. They're good as long as you use brass ammunition. I have a video out on these. They're excellent. Don't use steel cased. Not that you would in special operations or you're going to have some problems. Great magazine, but there's no windows in it. And we finally got them to reinforce it with steel on these Tapcos. One of the best magazines made for the Mini-14 right here. You can't go wrong with the factories, right? Well, actually you can because they're pretty darn heavy. Very heavy. This one is a Pro Mag steel. It's very similar to the old, old Federal Ordnance Mini-14 magazines. And from what I've seen, they're pretty decent. The Polymer Pro Mags for the Mini-14 are garbage. Stay away from them. So I'd go with the factory Ruger magazines, the 20s or the 30s. From what I know now, or the Tapcos. Maybe the Pro Max too, because in my limited shooting, this has been good. Subject to change. How about this? Oh, reliability and durability. Oh, wow. Which one? They're both on the rack. Which one am I going to take? Which one's going to be the most reliable? Well, I'll say this. Over the years, the Mini 14 has been extraordinarily reliable in my shooting. And I'm talking decades. Doesn't mean I haven't seen jams. Uh-uh. That's all I'm saying. But I've seen them in both guns. You know, ARs, minis, they both jam. Okay, I think that Mini-14, if you run it properly, load your magazines properly. <clears throat> really reliable. So is this, though. I mean, a DI gun, properly maintained. You know, excellent. By the way, the bolt carrier group is just a Rock River matte chrome finish. It's not really a mil-spec bolt carrier. Because, honestly, this gun's not going to see that many rounds. If it was, maybe I'd put like, you know, mil spec, shot peened, all that stuff in there. It's enough. How many, are you going to, how many rounds is it going to see in its lifetime? You know, special operations environment. Uh, I'm going to be running something even better in there. Trust me. This did jam on me, though. I, and that was basically when I was doing the, the bench resting out in the desert. And it could have been, could have been an interference with that, the, the, the shooting rest that I had because there's two metal bars here they're banging into the magazine I'm really not sure if that happened but it happened 
several stoppages. I, I was kind of surprised though because I hadn't seen that in the Mini 14 for a long time. But off the barricade and tactical shooting, once again, it was 100% reliable. I have to throw that out there though. I would say reliability wise, durability wise, uh, they're really neck and neck from what I see. You know, shooting the barrels, you could say, well, this isn't chrome lined. That isn't either. This is a stainless steel barrel version. But if you did have a stainless steel SPR, I don't know. If you want to throw, you know, another gun with a different barrel configuration on there, you could say, hey, the AR-15 is going to last longer. Uh, I do know this. Ruger uses some very quality materials. Although it's an investment cast receiver, it's very durable. Their springs, very durable. You know, I... I don't know. I'll just call that pretty much a draw, which is to say they're not perfect. Every gun will malfunction and have problems here and there. It just is the way it goes. It's Murphy's Law in total operation. It happens. That takes its accuracy. i got to cruise. How about this? Kicking it off with a Mini 14. And I know a lot of you guys are dialed into this because you're like, hey, does that, that Troy MCS system make the Mini 14 more accurate? i got to fold this over because there's more shots on this paper that I can't show you at this point. A review coming up. How's that? 100 yards, and that's with a Troy Battle Sight. These. Which, by the way, before I forget, I, hey, Troy, you need to, like, open up that channel so we can put our adjustment tool in there, dude. I had to, like, freaking grind that so I could adjust that front post. And, yes, I put a slightly slimmer AR-15 post in there. But, yeah, I shot basically a just over MOA group with irons out of the Mini-14. Now... I won't lie to you, that excited me to a high level. <laughs> it totally did. But then I shot these groups, and, you know, I was kind of a doofus because I didn't have, I thought this was tightened down all the way, and my groups start wandering. I'm like, what is going on with this? Checking everything. I'm going to tell you about this piece here in a minute. And lo and behold, I didn't have my scope rings tightened. I tightened them, and then freaking finally get it dialed in, tightened. I know, I should have done that. And I shot these groups, PMC, 3.5. 3.75 MOA? Okay, that's totally not impressive. That's what I shoot out of a normal Mini-14. There's a couple more PMC groups. Now granted, PMC is not the most accurate ammo. That's XM193 here. That was some side ends rounds. Now, okay, that's more like it. XM193, that's good. There's another group. 2 MOA. Keep shooting. Spent a lot of rounds shooting. I can't, can't lie to you because it was... All dicked up here. I wasted a lot of rounds. <laughs> I'm like, what is going on with this? It's wandering. And finally, I know, got it dialed in. Then we shot this. Match King, 0.3 MOA out of a freaking Mini-14. XM-93, there's 0.75 MOA. That's pretty good. This is off a bench in the desert, not at a shooting range. There's a half MOA with XM-93. There's Seller, Seller and Bellet, 1 MOA. And this is when my scope was loose, kind of all over the place, question mark. Didn't know what was going on. XM193 coming in with that. Wow. Okay, so if you're asking the question, I will say the MCS tightens up the minis groups from what I know now. That's what I'm saying. How about this? This is Iron Sights. Spec Ops Mini 14, that's Troy MCS, with irons. I was aimed at this guy's head, granted group left. Great group. Told you I shot a lot with this suck, sucker, mostly on paper. There's a group right there. P this is all PMC, and PMC finally came together after I tightened everything up. Whoa! Out of a Mini-14? That's pretty dang good. Nice. Nice, finally, that one. How about the SPR? Well, I will tell you, honestly, as you saw in the review, Concept SPR. SPR number one isn't shooting exactly as well as I would like it to. I would call it overall a 1.5 MOA gun with ball. Hey, but nothing fancy. That's what you should be shooting with ball ammo. I know, I know. But the Rock River Arms Elite Operator shoots into MOA with PMC, with American Eagle, and so that's what I was hoping for. Can't lie. I was. With really good ammunition, SPR number one will easily group into one MOA. Witness the following photographs. There you go. You'll see XM193 somewhere along there shooting 0.5 MOA. Most other loads are shooting 1.5 MOA. Nosler 55 grains, about 
0.8 MOA, just under. Fioki 77 grain match BTHPs, 1 MOA. So easily a 1 MOA gun with proper ammunition. And then SPR number two, the one I just showed you suppressed. You guys are liking this. Even better. Okay, that's shooting 75 grain boat tail Hornady's. Basically one MOA. There's a one MOA group there. By the way, this is the other day I was shooting this and that's a steel case Hornady's. And this isn't the gun, that's the target was flapping in the wind. That's what you need to look at right there. In the desert with a 30 mile an hour wind. Not a crosswind, but that's this gun right here. So the nod to accuracy I will give Drum roll, uh, SPR. Especially, I think, if the ranges become extended. Because popping steel with both of these guns, not exactly this one or that one, over the years, it seems like the AR tends to hang better when you go beyond 300 yards. Just saying. I'll give the nod to the SPR. That being said, you know, if you do some very careful shooting, you can get some good results out of the Special Ops Mini 14. The weight does help. That MCS weight helps a lot right here. Pressing on. Field strip maintenance. Advantage AR M4. M16. Hands down. Here's why. The MCS chassis is very cool. But it's the receiver, as you can tell, is buried with inside, with inside the MCS. And to get it, get it, it's actually not you know, hugely a pain, you got to hit this cross pan out. But the plot thickens and it kind of sucks. There is a retention screw in here. We forgot, specifically Tactical Doodle, since you put this together, forgot to tighten. That was another one of the variables when I was doing accuracy testing. I started grabbing this. I'm like, man, is something moving here? What's going on? And there was a very slight movement forward and aft. And I was like, what the freak? It was because that little screw, from what I could perceive, was loose. And its whole job is, here's a photo, is to hold that cross pin in a retained position. By the way, it sucks the way it's constructed. It should be very strong. It should be either Torx head or hex head and it should extend completely out because this is a frequently accessed screw and it should be extremely rugged, hardened steel because its job is very important and that is locking that pick rail down. Speaking of field strips, you have to pull that off and once you do, you will slide this Picatinny rail off. Then you can access the receiver of the Mini 14. And then you get into the standard Mini 14 field strip. Whew, I would say it's a pain in the butt. Just saying. You know, AR-15, piece of cake. Two pins, two push pins. You can take the whole freaking receiver off. Comes out so quickly. Easy to clean, easy to maintain, easy to swap again. Mission specific uppers on the modularity and mission adaptability due to that feature alone. Advantage AR SPR. Hands down. I mean, if I'm deploying these two guns are on the racks, this is just a theoretical situation. You get that. These are the questions going through my mind. Hey, man, you know, it's going to be lighter weight. You know, the accuracy is probably going to be better. You know, honestly, if this was shooting half him away with everything, it would really give it a lot more points in my book. But it wasn't. It was kind of all over the map. You know, with some loads, it would shoot a really good, great group. That's kind of a Mini 14, by the way, in its essence. You'll shoot a really great group, and then you'll go, what the freak? <laughs> what happened? Then it opens up. If it was shooting half him away with the MCS, no matter what, I'd be a much, much more excited about the configuration. And then maybe the weight would be worth it because remember we talk about in the nut fancy project firepower versus mobility good weight is that which adds capabilities we're not talking about second kind of cool we're not talking about oh this is such a cool looking gun we're talking about war fighting capabilities sustained fire accuracy reliability durability that's all i care about dig that's what i'd care about that's what's going to save my buddy that's what's going to kill the bad guys threatening my life advantage spr Says I, from what I know now, how about accessories? Well, you're seeing two, two of my favorite, well, I shouldn't say two of my favorite, but several of my favorite on the Mini 14. The MCS chassis is cool. It is freaking heavy. It's oblong. It's got the rails. It's got the quirk in the back with a pin. It's got too much metal here. 
but it does add capabilities and rigidity to the Mini, Mini 14, and if you're talking something kind of cool, <clears throat> a lot of cool looks, granted. But along with that, you get the AR-15 ergonomics for the pistol grip and the buttstock like we've talked about already. You know, what else do you need to change? Well, I want to change the barrel length on it. Uh, okay, huge project, very expensive. Very expensive. You're stuck with a 16 with this tactical version. Sorry, that's just the way it is. Hey, I want to change the barrel length on my AR. We talked about it. Piece of cake, do it. I still think the A 18 is the best all-around barrel length for most of what most folks do, including military guys. Absolutely. All kinds of accessories. Don't like the trigger? Change it. Don't like the max? Change it. You know, different charging handles, bolts, scope options. The sky's the limit. You can just go on and on. It is completely mission adaptable. And if you choose your accessories wisely, it's very lightweight. Once again, 8 pounds, 11 ounces for this one. And that other SPR, like I said, I wrote it down, the Sabre defense-based one is 9 pounds, 13 ounces as configured. So it's going to be heavier. By the way, that's with the can. Sorry, I forgot to say that. That's with the Trek on it, that one I just showed you. So accessories, that's all I'm going to say. The modularity of the AR-15 honestly wins. You know it does. That takes us to, oh, it's going to be so sad, nearing the end of the video, to value. Now, I said cost is secondary. If we're asking the question, is this configuration special operations capable? We've answered it in a lot of different ways. We've kind of leveled some honest criticisms against the Mini 14 in this philosophy of use. We're not talking recreational. We're not talking home defense. We're talking marching through the freaking mountains of Afghanistan or who knows where, deep in bad guy country. It's just heavy. You know, it may not be as accurate. It may not be as ergonomic in most people's minds, and it definitely is not as mission adaptable. You know it. it just isn't. How about value? Is it worth it? Okay, I did say cost secondary, but we gotta hone in on this. Troy has discontinued the Mini 14 MCS, and here's why. It's just too expensive. It's expensive for them to produce. I mean, this is all CNC milled right through here. It's basically a solid block of aluminum. Who knows how many milling operations are performed on this thing as they hone it out, they machine it, then they coat it. It's expensive. Very expensive. And I just don't think it's sold because, you know, you have basically a $700 Mini 14. Who's going to go out and buy a $750 completely configured stock? You can't. They are out there, by the way, still. I think I saw them on Amazon. There's some other uh, online places that have the MCS if you want it. Uh, but it's just going to be expensive. If you just get the chassis alone, it's going to be out $450. So now you've got a $700 gun and chassis at $750, let's just say. you got a $1,400 Mini 14. I want to bring this philosophy of use discussion back to the civilian realm, okay? Hang with me. So now you're paying the bills. You don't have a unit paying the bills. You just spent $1,400 on a Mini 14 with the disadvantages we've clearly spelled out here. Isn't that money better spent on an AR-15 variant? I think the answer is pretty clear. Now, don't get me wrong. Like I said at the outset, I love the Mini 14, but if you leave it the way it was, don't put that much money in a Mini 14. In a way, it's a fool's errand. In the standard tactical configuration, with a can even, the Mini 14 is a superb tactical carbine choice. It's still going to be light, it's going to be sufficiently accurate, very reliable, <coughs> and it won't be that heavy. So in terms of value, if you're paying the bills, this one's going to lose big time because it's just so expensive. And we haven't even talked about the mount, the optic. Don't get me wrong, this SPR as configured, I bet it, I didn't add it all up, probably run around $1,200, $1,400 at least. I mean, the mount here again is like $230, $235, this, but it's an MOA built-in mount for long range, long distance shooting with a 5.56. You need it out there. Trust me, we've done it. You're going to have to be spinning that bullet. I do MOA come ups, not necessarily ballistic reticle. So value, let's go back to a military setting. I'm paying the bills. I would still still say that M16, AR-15, I'm using the broad category, system wins because I have so much interchangeability. It's one system. If I have a worn out barrel, I can just push pin another one on. This one's set. 
Now, this is just all theoretical. We're not saying that the military is using these or I'm advocating it. It's just an interesting question about the Mini 14. How about track record? We've kind of hit it already, right? The Mini 14 has a very solid track record for what it is. It was used by a lot of police agencies, still is. A lot of prisons still use it. There have been some militaries use it for what it is. It's excellent. It's a grand, it's excellent. It's a grand action, modified grand action. It's very proven for what it is. Now in this configuration, not so much, obviously. You know, if you're banging around the rocks in Afghanistan, are you gonna have problems with this upper coming loose? With this pin, which is honestly really needs to be redesigned. It needs to be stronger than that. It should be really over-engineered. Hopefully not heavy, but over-engineered if it was still being produced. I don't know. I don't have the answer to that. I didn't do a long-term hardcore thrown against rocks, getting in and out of armored vehicles test on it. I suspect, as from just my experience here in TMP, there's always going to be surprises. You'll just go, I can't believe that just broke on me. It shouldn't have broken. You know, I don't know. Once again, this is not the strongest SPR mount, the best optic. I will say this Redfield scope though, with its ballistic reticle is an outstanding value and very capable. Hey Nutton, would you take that to Afghanistan, that exact scope? Uh, I would like more modification, to be honest with you. Especially if I'm ranging out to 600 yards. Nine power, don't cut it for me. But if I had to, I could. Is it tough enough? Who knows? Who knows? Again, if you have unlimited funds, go for a you know, super, superb quality optic. Track record on the SPR, I think, you know, we're talking about in the military circles, has been excellent. Excellent. Perfect? Absolutely not, but excellent. You know, for what it is. It's not a sustained LMG roll. It's not high volume of fire. It's precision rifle fire. Now try it with occasionally rapid fire if you need to, the gun's up to it. And I'm not, again, I'm not gonna be dumping 500 rounds through it at a time. Heck, for that matter, 200 rounds, unless you're in a firefight that, you know, you're gonna die if you don't do what you have to do. Can it get by on looks alone? The special operations as configured this version Mini 14, the answer is no, it can't. It comes in second in most categories to that again don't misunderstand me i love the mini 14 but we're looking at this configuration with the troy mcs stock with all the configurations or modifications i've done not that many going up against this gun which is going to provide more velocity it's an 18 inch barrel versus a 16 inch barrel and the 556 needs all it can get 75. you know that's that's substantial to me I'm ranging across the valley, I need that velocity. Still one of the coolest looking Mini 14s I've ever seen, I kid you not. If you're looking for second kind of cool, you're looking for something that's gonna turn heads at the range and hold its own in the range. I know we weren't gonna talk about recreational PAU, but I'll touch on it briefly. This gun is gonna get more attention than that one. Because guys are gonna come up to you and go, WTH, WTH man, what is that? That's a Mini 14, shut up, especially with a can on it. By the way, the Gentech Trek is awesome. Such a great can, there's lots out there. You just don't see it that often, a Mini 14 configured like that. So the answer is right there on the table. Cool gun, not quite up in this configuration to a true special operations role. I know it's just a theoretical question. Thanks for watching.